Hello, welcome back for another video. Today I'm going through my top 10 new features added in Ark Survival Ascended. It is quite refreshing that they did add some new features to the game and not just reskin the whole thing. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Starting off, we have character customization, of course. Everyone's favourite part of Ark, and that is creating ourselves and making ourselves look beautiful. Or in most cases, as deformed as possible. And in this new game, there are plenty of customizable features that can achieve this for you. Ranging from even customizing every single muscle on your body to make yourself look buff or absolutely weak. And same goes for fat levels. You can alter these in the same exact way. You can now customize your hairstyle and hair length and even change the sound of your voice. Just in case you feel like you need to make yourself more intimidating. <laughs> All in all, it's a massive improvement from the ASE character customization. Chibi pets no longer fill the offhand slot in your inventory. So in Ark Survival Evolved, this was never a thing. If you wanted to equip yourself a shield and a chibi at the same time, there's just no option to do that. The chibi was always equipped in the offhand slot and so was a shield, for example. The chibis now have their own slot to be equipped to which is found when accessing your inventory, you can see it at the base of your character screen. This is a very welcoming change, I must say. The way electricity works in Arcs of Isle Ascended has completely changed from ASE. So electrical outlets and cables, they're completely gone. All you need to power your electrical appliances these days is a power generator. Once equipped and ready to place, a range radius will now be visible on screen. This indicates the power range of the generator. Anything placed inside the radius will be automatically powered. Once placed down, all you need is gasoline to run it of course. Once turned on, everything in the radius will be powered. No need for any outlets, no need for any ugly looking cables. Personally, I'm loving this change. Leading us on perfectly to the next feature, which is the majority of appliances do not need gasoline to run anymore. So back on ASE, you pretty much needed gasoline to run everything. The fabricator, chemistry bench, industrial cooker, just to name a few. But now all you need is these to be placed within the radius of a power generator and they will all run without gasoline. And I cannot stress how awesome this is because I'm one of those people that would leave my appliances on 24 7 and just waste gasoline like there's no tomorrow. Oops, now Captain Fat Todd knows who left the fabricator on during Monarchy Season 3 Scorched Earth. Well, I'm not gonna have that problem anymore, am I? Irrigating appliances has also completely changed in ASA, as in ASE, you would have to place your intake and build a load of water pipes connecting to your appliances to fully irrigate them. All you need in ASA is an intake placed in water. It works the exact same way as the generator. Once selected, you'll see the irrigation radius. So anything placed within the radius will be irrigated without the need of any extra pipes. You can also add a number of water tanks within that radius to extend the range of your water supply, giving you a larger range to play around with. Out of everything that is new with Arts of Valor Ascended, this is probably my most favorite new feature. Wild dinosaurs and creatures now roam around with babies, and these can actually be tamed, which is a massive game changer, as you don't even need kibble or preferred foods to tame them. Once the parent of that baby has been killed, you can instantly tame that baby and claim it for yourself. I have recently just finished a playthrough on the hunted mod from ASE and I must admit seeing so many babies in the wild made me want it even more. So I'm super happy that this is implemented in the game. Quarter walls and quarter ceilings have been added to the game. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it depending on whether you're a builder or not. I'm not a builder because I suck at it so I love this feature, but if you're one of those smart builders that like to play around with the game mechanics, it may or may not ruin it for you. I don't know, like I said, I only know how to build a box. But as you can see, you can make some really cool structures with them. The possibilities are endless. There is now an in-game waypoint tracker system and ping system. It's really nice to see that Ark has finally caught up to the numerous amount of games that implement features like this. To use a waypoint, you go into your inventory and then go onto the map icon at the top of your screen. There is the option to pick a waypoint point this is where you can customize it to your liking give it a name change the coordinates or customize the color for example click accept and the icon will show up on your map you can then click this icon to enable the tracker it's kind of like how the taming tracker works but you can do it with any waypoint that you pick Secondly, we have the all new ping system. To access the ping commands, click and hold the middle mouse button, or if you're playing on Xbox controller, like me, hold left bumper and right bumper together. And this is the wheel selection. Once you select a ping from the wheel, it will show in game for a short duration of time, where your tribe mates can also see this ping and they know what you're up to. If for some reason you don't want to talk to them, that is. Supply beacons and loot crates have changed immensely. First of all, they look completely different. And second of all, it seems the loot tables have completely 
greatly changed when compared to arcs of our evolved. The majority of them tend to drop high tier loot, blueprints and consumable items. I also did find a deep sea loot crate which contained a woolly rhino saddle and a ferrazino saddle and if you played arcs of our evolved before you'll know that those are not normally part of the deep sea loot table. I am a bit of a grinder when it comes to looting so this took me by surprise. Personally I'm not sure if I like it or not I do like a good challenge and I think this feature makes the game way too easy but that's just me. It's still a massive change nonetheless and could be a welcoming change for anyone that doesn't like farming loot crates over and over again. And finally we have one of the things that make Ark so much fun, which is mods. And now they are available for everyone, including console once they get this game. No need to use Steam to download your mods anymore, just go onto the mods section on the main menu and you can download your mods there. So far we have a bunch of creatures and cool dinosaurs to choose from, and also the Spartalfine map, created by Nocartus. I must say I haven't played it yet, but from what I've seen it looks amazing. And to activate the mods, go into your created game, clicking on mod settings, and this is where you can activate or deactivate your installed mods. And that is also going to be the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it and hope it was helpful to you. I'll catch you all in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.